Welcome back to the group theory solution of exercise sheet number three. Here in exercise number two we want to see what happens if we transform our operators according to rotations. Our operators are here the position operator, the momentum operator and the Laplacian. Our rotations are defined uh, as being act on a wave function and it transforms the argument of the wave functions according to a rotation matrix R. If we know that R is a rotation matrix, we have to conclude immediately that R transpose it is equal to its inverse. We will use that in the calculation. So what, how do we compute this expression? In order to use our definition, we have to act with that on a wave function and see what happens. The first step is of course pretty easy. We just insert our rotation matrix over here. In the next step we do a little mathematical trick. We don't know how this acts on this thing. We have to define a new function in order to uh, use that definition. And psi tilde is just r times our old psi of the argument r times little r. So we act with our, with our operator according out to our definition. And we, in, we look back at how this is defined and arrive at our result. Why is this our result? Because psi of r and this psi of r are just the same and we can, we can neglect them and write our condition just like this. In the same way we compute our position operator. In the first step we of course just insert our definition. But then we have to do a little trick again. Because here we have two different variables and we don't know again how they transform. So what we do is we change our derivative according to the argument of our wave function. To do that we have to use the chain rule and end up with the derivative of our argument according to our old variable right here. So this is nothing else than our transpose. If you go into the indice detail you can see that immediately. Here we can act on this part because we know what happens to the to this uh, part of our equation. This is nothing else than r to the minus one. And if we act with or on this part we arrive just as at our old thing over here what we expect. We can rewrite again this condition by leaving out the psi's and arrive at what is required from the exercise. In the last part we can we can we can save us lots of work if we use of, of what we calculated in part b. So we can rewrite this in terms of a scalar product of two vectors. We have one vector right here and then we we, we uh, multiply it with the second vector over here. Now into this multiplication we insert a 1. A 1 being namely a rotation forward and then backward again. Then this expression looks just like what we, what we know from, from part b. And we can insert what we've computed already. So here we arrive at r to the minus 1 times the gradient scalar product with r to the minus 1 times the gradient. Because the scalar product is a bilinear operation we can draw this r out and this r out. Then this gets transposed, which means it, uh, it is inverted, which then leaves it with r to the minus 1 times r, which gets annihilated and leaves us with a 1. And the scalar multiplication of two gradients, which is nothing else than the Laplacian. Thank you for watching. This is actually a very nice result that our Laplacian is invariant under rotations. And you will use it in the following exercise sheets now and then. So keep that in mind. Thank you for watching.